What is VR locomotion and why is it a problem? VR locomotion typically refers to the means used within the virtual world to move from one location to another. Anything from walking, running, swimming, flying, to even teleporting can be considered a means of VR locomotion. Thanks to modern processes and graphics, we can simulate just about any means of transportation desired. If you can do it in a normal video game, you can do it in VR. At least, that's how things would be in an ideal world. At this point, our VR interfaces are lagging behind in capability to our simulation potential. Each interfacing technique currently available has the ability to make us feel a sense of presence, within limited scenarios, but have problems that hold them back from being an ideal fit for some of our most desired VR locomotion situations, from running around in fields, swimming in vast oceans, to fighting giant monsters. To explain in detail, I will explore the two main control schemes of virtual reality as of 2018, gamepad inputs and motion controls. Gamepad inputs, along with the keyboard and mouse, and touchscreens are the primary methods of controlling video games outside of the VR space, and are capable of performing their duties in VR just as well as they do for traditional gaming setups. The problem here is in their lack of any meaningful methods of facilitating immersion. Our minds expect their output and intents to yield certain effects on our bodies. The tilting of an analog stick, the pressing of a key, and the touching of a screen, while fine for manipulating a third-person entity, does not resemble the experience of our movement in our real bodies, providing no haptic, kinesthetic, proprioceptive, or vestibular stimuli whatsoever. That disconnect results in this control method feeling the least immersive of any we have and in the worst cases causes VR sickness to occur in users due to the vestibular disconnect between what is occurring in the virtual world and in the real world. With motion controls, we can use tracking technologies to observe bodily actions and map them one-to-one -one with objects in the virtual world. This solution is able to perform any action that we can perform in the real world with no cost to any of our body's self-observations in kinesthetic and proprioception, mitigating motion sickness as a result. The problem here lays in the fact that this technique requires the desired virtual action to be performed in the real world. Without mitigating elements like omnidirectional treadmills or open spaces, Actual movement becomes limited to the real-world space available, lest you want to run into a wall or knock over everything in your vicinity. In addition, this method ignores any virtual-world factors present, causing clipping or avatar desyncing depending on the application. As such, motion controls are currently our most immersive method of input, as long as your application is within the range and complexity of a room-scale experience. The VR locomotion problem is thusly one of wanting a better VR interface that can both allow us to use the full scope of our body's abilities while maintaining or enhancing our immersion. While we may not currently have any widespread technology that can resolve all of these problems, we can get glimpses of possible solutions through the fictional works that inspired these developments to begin with. In Tron, the very conscious of the person was digitized and made a manipulator inside of the virtual world, effectively making you into an NPC. The Matrix uses a brain jack to directly interface with the brain on an internal level. Sword Art Online demonstrates the use of electromagnetic waves to read and manipulate brain activity, sending stimuli inputs from the virtual world into the brain and stopping outputs from the brain from reaching their destinations in the body, using them instead to manipulate a virtual avatar. And most recently, in Ready Player One, sophisticated armatures and suits are used to emulate virtual stimuli, effectively making virtual stimuli real while turning real outputs virtual, negating the issues of motion controls at this point in time. No matter the solution or solutions that ultimately come about, to resolve the VR locomotion problem is to expand the range of virtual reality possibility to its fullest potential. Just as the mouse did to the keyboard, dual thumbsticks to the joypad, and a capacitive touchscreen to the smartphone, VR will truly come into its own once we can engage with it at its full extent. That is why we need to solve the VR locomotion problem.